All right. So really excited, Anthony, for today's session. This is, you're our third expert, health and uh, wellness expert for our wellness week series. Um, reminder to everyone that this is just a, a really cool series, interactive, just to touch on different wellness topics um, and events. Um, so Anthony, you're going to lead our strength and longevity session. So just to give a quick overview, we'll do some quick intros. Um, want to pick your brain around just strength training in general. When we were talking before this call, I thought it was really interesting about um, how strength really impacts everything, you know, inside your body and out. I usually think of it as like more external, obviously, you know, having, you know, strength allows you to do other things in terms of mobility, but it's really interesting that you touched on kind of like the mood and everything. So we'll get into that. Um, and then we'll just leave it open for a few Q and A's and a couple of demos. I will be the guinea pig and demo some simple exercises. I don't have that much space, but I have some weights next to me. And I know there's like body weight and actual weights. Uh, so we'll get into that and then leave like a few minutes for Q and A. Yeah. Um, so if you want to kick it off, just to introduce yourself, who you are, what you do, and I'll intro myself, and then we can get into it. Okay. All right. My name is Anthony Joe. Um, I'm a personal trainer and pro bodybuilder. Um, made the Olympia like twice. Um, so the Olympia is like a Super Bowl of bodybuilding. Mm. Um, just going into my sixth year as a pro, and going to almost ten years as a um personal trainer, working with athletes, kids, um, celebrities, um, and just everyday people and taking that uh, level of fitness to the next level. You, know, nice. um, you have a lot of experience. Um, I, got, I got into fitness. Um, one of my gym teachers and we used to play basketball and he said we had to work out before playing basketball. And from there, we just, I just took off. And Since like high school, it's been my passion. Mm -hmm. Nice, fine, love that. It's been my passion to help people out, and um, just about six years ago, yeah, I got into bodybuilding, meeting my personal trainer manager, who uh, put me into the sport. And I love the discipline and the mindset that it gives you. Mm. Yes, it's uh, loose diet and things like that. Um, overall, just pushing in good state and you just focus and lock in. Nice. And, and just really quick, and we'll get to more Q&As, just in terms of like um, your profession, obviously it's like your personal and professional life, you have you instill wellness into that, but how do you, from a nutritional standpoint and dietary standpoint, how do you prep for, for your sessions? So I am a certified nutritionist. So, you know, I have the study in you know, simple, um, nutrition and suggested diet. And when it comes to myself, um, Food is just as important, you know, mm -hmm. diet is just as important. Um, if not more important than the gym, because it's like sitting, you know, you got to put big gas in the Ferrari, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. so yeah. your body function like that. Um, my diet, everything is written down, everything is to the T. But I try to tell my clients, you know, you don't have to be that way. You know, mm -hmm. healthy choices. Um yeah, and just go from your yeah, healthy choices and just trying to live for the long haul. Right? It's a um clarify my trick. You know, people want to get to their goal real fast, but my thing is just taking every day little keys and trying to be the best they can day by day. Cool. All right, we'll get more into that. Um, I'm Camille. I am the marketing lead at Fit Biomics. Um, I handle all things marketing. Uh Fit Biomics, for those that don't know, is a bioscience bioscience company that spun out of Harvard, specifically the Weiss Institute in 2018. Um, our founders do some study some really cool science. Um, they study, study the microbiomes of the super fit and athletes and healthiest profiles, such as yourself. We definitely worked with you, obviously, um, in those studies and take that data and translate that into some really cool um, health solutions um, uh, for longevity and really giving people different, um, more natural kind of health solutions to really live a longer, healthier life. Um, our first product is Nella. It's a daily probiotic that's clinically validated to improve sleep quality, health, and digestion. I can attest to that because I use that daily. Um, Anthony, I know you use it too, so we can talk a little bit yeah. more about how, how you like it and what it's done for you. 
Um, but yeah, that's just kind of, that's me and the company in a, in a nutshell, but we can get into um, kind of the Q and A's just in terms of um, strength. So first question for you is just kind of for the, for the average kind of person, um, why is incorporating strength sessions into your routine so important? Um, one for like, you know, daily life, if you ever went shopping and you got a bag full of groceries, you know, man, this is heavy. Yeah. Right. Basic strength training will help with those daily things that you need to do with, um, you know, as simple as carrying your groceries. And also with, um, like I said, with mood as well, um, always put you in a better mood when you can hit a PR or something like that. And it's just building strength in the body. You know? And um, what most people think is a more of an aesthetic thing mm -hmm. is just making a stronger version of yourself. And what you're doing that with increased bone density, you know, um, the body is stronger, the mind is stronger. So um, I like to look at strength training more of building your body just to be stronger. Mm. So it's not like a one and done thing. It's kind of like you have to pretty make it, you should make it part of like your everyday routine because you're only going to get stronger and better and, and whatnot. Yeah, you should make it part of your daily routine, just like cardiovascular. But mm. when people say cardio, oh, I'm sweating, I'm losing weight. Yeah. That's the cardiovascular system, you know what I mean? So, yeah. Um, to build uh, strength and resistance with, with resistance training, um, you can build lean muscle tissue. You can have, uh, you know, when you build the lean muscle tissue, it helps with your immune system. Everything's so like the body just gets stronger. Mm -hmm. So that's how I like to, uh, to teach it off, you know, pass it on to my son. Got it. No, it's good to know. I'm like a cardio. I used to be a super cardio person. I think I mentioned that before. And now, little by little, I'm starting to work more strength training into my routine. And I notice a difference. Like, I've been like with consistency, been able to like lift a little bit more or do a little bit more. Also able to like, as I'm getting older, like bend down a little bit more, which definitely is helpful. And, and from, and to your point, like from a mental standpoint, like the fact that I'm getting stronger, it really, it's like validation for me. So. Yeah. Uh, I also see a question of uh, why is this training important for women? Yeah. Why is it um, for women? Most of my clients are women and for them, it builds up the confidence, you know, um, also on a hormonal standpoint, you know, women fluctuate between water weight and things like that and, mm -hmm. and mood. So with strength training, you can release that water weight, you know what I mean? You can uh, build that lean muscle tissue. And also, um, I realized that women get a lot stronger and faster than men. Oh, really? For me. Hmm. And it's not almost so the amount of weight, but the volume. Like I can make a woman do a vomit squat to a jump squat to a yeah. reverse lunge. And working that lower extremity always works for them in um, building lean muscle. So it's important because, like I said, the mood and also just having the basic strength. You know what I mean? Hmm. And, um, I try to keep that to most of my women. And they're always confident, definitely a, a confident standpoint. Interesting. And then in terms of like, um, I guess, is there a different, like what kind of weight should we start out with? I mean, I know, I'm sure it depends on the person, but like, is there a difference? A, what should we start out with? And is there a difference between what, uh, men and women when it comes to like the actual like weight? I mean, the actual weight, your own body can be your own. Resistance hmm. strength, right? So you can do a stationary lunge. You can do a squat where you hold, where you isometrically hold it. All that builds strength. So all resistance ain't weight. Um, hmm. Most people try to go like, oh, I want a back squat. Yeah. 300 pounds. I say no, because you have to learn to be able to, we call it, get into the bucket. You know, be, be able to do a, a squat from a 90 degree angle uh, and depth going down. So. Once we build that up, then we can do the garment squat. Then we can do the squat holes, and then we go on the bar after I just build up the core. So um, everything is like a level and a system that I like to build. Got it. And, uh, 
and all that becomes transparent. So to answer your question, your body can be your own weapon. I would start off with body weight exercises yeah. first and then focus on your form. And through form, you build strength. Hmm. Okay. Noted. Taking notes, taking mental notes. <laughs> we'll definitely share like a recap um, after this because I think this is useful information. Um, so next question is just kind of going back to the gut. Like how important is it to make sure you have like a, a clean gut, if you will, or like, you know, you're prepping your insides for, that sounds like weird, but you know, prepping your insides for a good strength training um, session. All right, so I compare everything to a car. Right? So um, having a clean gut is like having a clean oil, right? Mm -hmm. You know how you're going to get your oil changed. Yeah. So um, the car can have the gas, it can have the knowledge, but without having the, the clean insides of the oil to flow through the body or flow through the engine, it can't produce that. And from a personal standpoint, I did suffer from an IBS mm. my third year as a pro. And um, I had that after the flight. It was terrible. And then um just so happened, I ran into Nella. Hmm. And I noticed that I was sleeping better without even knowing the real introduction to the product. Oh, okay. And for me, I have to use something hands-on and just to know. But, um, and then I noticed that my waist got smaller because I was able to move my bowels more um, yeah. frequently and digest my food and get that empty, you know, bacteria out of the body. And it overall changed my whole mood. Okay. And I would do regular and modern cardio. I would try the Marginus diet, try the keto diet, and just notice I wasn't losing weight because of my gut issue. But now, teaming up with Nella and uh, you know, uh, using the product now, I take it once a day and timely every day. Okay. And uh, it's still like my body is into a routine as well. Yeah. That's nice. what I love about it. We love to hear that. I mean, I feel the same. I mean, I use it in a different way. Like I didn't have IBS issues, but like, um, and I've told this to everybody, um, I just feel lighter. Like mm -hmm. not in that sense, like I'm like lost a lot of weight, just feel like I don't have that heavy bloated feel. And whenever I'm feeling like super bloated, it's very hard for me to like want to move around, or let alone do strength training. So um, I too definitely use it in, as part of my daily routine because I know it's just going to make everything, it's going to enhance the performance of everything else. So Exactly. And especially one thing I see with being bloated, the mood. You don't yeah. want to do much. I'm sitting around. You don't know whether to eat or not. You feel hungry. But yeah. you know, you, your stomach is expanding, your water retention is up. So um, Nella definitely hits it on a nail with, you know, correcting those things. And also sleep with stuff. Yeah. Because I'm going to bed, not on an empty stomach, but like you said, a lighter stomach. Yeah. You know, and totally. um, definitely up with sleep. Yep. Cool. Uh, we have another question. As we get older, some of ex some of us experience knee pain, I know this, and hip tightness, all of which limit our mobility and ability to strength train to full capacity, sometimes leading to injury. What kind of strength training can we do to strengthen our knees and hips and mobility? How many days a week should we do them and for how long? Okay, going back with uh, knee and hip injury, uh, you want to hit the surrounding muscles that... Mm -hmm. Mostly, when people have knee pain, it's tightness of the hips and the lack of strength in the glutes and hamstrings. So what you want is that directional pull to be reversed. So I will do exercises that stretch the, the quad and the hip flexor and strengthen the glutes. So I will do more, uh, when it comes to uh, knee pain, more leg curls, glute bridges, more things that target the hamstring and um and things that help the lower back. So mm -hmm. you can get that pressure off the knee. Um, I would do mostly lightweight and try to stay away from squat, butt loaded back squat, um, and working your abductors. And I think you do the hamstrings, the abductors, and um, glute bridges, 
working on the glutes at least three times a week. Um, How many sets? Target, um, I will go two warm up sets and three working sets. Okay. okay. Warm up is just to get the movement, squeeze, fill it out, test the form, and then you know adding like that with um a lot more repetition. And then as you get stronger, you add more resistance. And you can do all those things body weight. You know, maybe you can take a resistance band. I think the resistance band for the uh, leg curl would be great. Okay. Just so you don't have the pressure of the weight. Uh, I'll try to see if I can show you the resistance band. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to picture but, it. But everything's on Google now. But, yeah, know, that's true. For the most part. Um, yes. Yeah, so to go back to it, I will strengthen the hamstring, loosen up the hip flexors. And that way you could take less pressure off the knee. Um, I wouldn't, I would stay away from squats. Anything that's far dominant, I will try to stay away from. And um, once you get to like, okay, because I'm asking for personal reasons now, because <laughs> I'm interested, but um, I had knee pain. I had like early arthritis. It's way better. I can squat a little lower. And so now I've started to incorporate some squatting. Is that okay? Or should I still like, because my knees are a little bit stiff, but they don't hurt. And like some days I can go lower than others. Like, is it okay to build, work that in now? Or so Every squat you do, I would do two hamstring exercises. Mm, okay. Right? So when you work that tightness, now you're going to start stretch feeling back. Got it. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, somebody start to Oh, can we demo? Way. Is there anything I can demo now? Or should it like, do I have okay. all the tools? If I could go on the floor to show you how to okay. stretch. Still see you. Okay, this is Jim. Okay. <laughs> so this is like the first one. Okay. Um, actually, this movement right here, the key feeling right here, is kind of good for the move. And then you're using that stability right there. For blood pressure, so you get the chest. Oh, okay. Let's see that. This is what you actually think. And what you do is like to see it. Working here. Can you guys see me? Yep. Right here. Boom. And, and there's no pressure on the knee. Mm -hmm. And he's working the hips. Got the big pace right here. Got it. Got the hips. And some group exercises you can do is you just take a bar. Or you can take weight. So now we're doing stiff leg deadlifts, right? Working the hamstring, right? Let's press on the knee. And yep. we're forcing the hip flexors to drive back. Let's press the here. More work in two. So you should feel a nice stretch. And as you stretch that and build this up, it works very helpful to these things. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Can you show you the type of bins you can use? So, so these bins, or well, tip country bins. Oh, I have these. Those are tough. Yes. <laughs> but it opens up the hip. Opens up the hip. Now, I would say if you do have these bins, this still works so far, just enough of the spot. But, um, so take the band. Yep. Right now, I'm working the hip flexors and strengthening my glute. And as I build that strength in my glute, it takes less pressure on the knee. Got it. And how many of those should you do? You should do, um, five to five, we'll count as one. Okay. Do like 12 reps. Okay. 
So anything 12 to 15 reps. So you want to do like endurance training or high repetition. Okay. Cool. Volume, more volume. Nice. All right, those are just some good exercise and like easy ones that we can work into our um, routine. I'm going to show you one more. Okay. <clears throat> you see that bench right there? Yep. Okay. Here. I shoot the hips down and drive through my hands. Oh. My glute. I'm stretching my hip flexors when I come up. You feel stretch yep. here. And work in here. But then, if you want to get more, more you know, resistance, you can do it. Oh my God, I'd probably fall over. <laughs> <laughs> I've not done that one. Okay, cool. So that way you should still strengthen your glutes, work on your legs, and less pressure on the knees. And mm -hmm. as you do that gradually, it'll take less pressure off the knees and help the knee pain. And would you say those are good workouts too for just, even if you don't have knee issues, just good beginner kind of strength workouts? Yeah, definitely beginner. So, yeah. Um, yeah, those are good beginner workouts. Um, especially because that's not a muscle group we target on every day. And we shut it off by sitting down. And yeah. that's where the knee pain comes from. If you're sitting down all the time, the hip flexors is working. Yeah. It's going to the But the group is shut off. So this is what you can see by scraping the knee. Let's touch on the knee. I think so much. Okay. Yes. So um yeah, you can do the glue bridges. You can do the um even body weight without the resistance band, you can do the side side ones. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, those are a lot of good home exercises to do. Yeah. Okay, those are good ones. Um and then I so for I have a question, just what are some general beginning weight exercises. I have, I can demo, I can play, I can okay. demo this time. What do you want to target? Like arms? Arms, okay. Yes. And I have an eight pound weight here. Okay. So let me pick them up. Yeah, what sure. should, like, what are the first, like, what should I do first? So for most of women, I feel that women just want to answer, but they take this part of it. Yes. All women. So yes. You please. Have um, you have two. Yeah, I have two. Okay. So first, you can start here, and the tricep sit down. And like sometimes I pull my neck, my sh I shrug my shoulders, which I know I'm not supposed to do. Yeah, so. you got to relax your shoulders. But what I want you to do is when I say hinge forward, and yeah. you drive the hips back. I okay. want you to turn forward a little bit more. Right. And put your elbow in your shoulder to a 90 degree angle with one straight line. And then yeah. you take that and get to the two. Yes. Yeah. That? Yeah. And you can do it for like 12 reps today. And these are eight pounds. Are these like. Yeah. These... It's a little heavy, so it's quite a quick Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll do lighter next time. But. Okay. okay. That's one. Another, another one you can do is you take both of them. Overhead price of the Oh, I think I need to sit for that because my ceilings are low. Let me see. With eight pounds too or lighter? Or I guess it doesn't matter, right? Oh, if it's too heavy, you can just take one. Okay. And go behind the head and stand up. Like that. Mm -hmm. And we go from 12 to 15 left left. And should I do these every day? Or no? I mean, you want you want to give a muscle group at least one day of rest. Okay. So I me as a bodybuilder, bodybuilder. But what right. I want to give my client is if I do an exercise that's like straight targeting the tricep, mm -hmm. I do something that's a tagging next day. 
So mm. if we hit five cents on Monday, tomorrow's chest workout will hit the tricep so they can see. Okay. So the chest, uh, chest hit the tricep as well. So I have it be close to the chest. So it's gotcha. a different movement, but hitting the same muscle. Okay. Cool. I'll try that. Awesome. Um, let's see. Any other questions? Let me look at the chat. Can we answer that? Okay, we have the exercise to do at the home gym and with weights. Um, I have one more question. Strength mm -hmm. as it relates to the core without doing sit-ups, because I have this is now like my for my own benefit, but diastasis recti. Um, diastasis recti. So any tips on what kind of core exercises women could do um, to address that? Or just in general, general core exercises? Um, I, would, I would say with some plank, right? Okay. Um, but I would do things that consist of um, inside rotation. So okay. you can put the handle on the cable machine and just sit in like a position. So you take the handle on the on a machine, you say you got the handle, you mm -hmm. sit here, right? Move the fire there. Yeah. So you don't want to, to poke out, you want to place the core here. Yeah. Get it back and check. You just hold for 30 seconds on both sides. Okay. So I'll do more things that you don't have to flex. Right. Up here, but you can do more things that like leg lifts, right? Um, but definitely I will start with anti rotation. Okay. And it's, it's a plank on the floor. Cool. All right. Really good tips, um, Anthony. Um, do we have any other questions? Last call for questions from anyone. Uh, let me look at my little notes. Okay, we talked about frequency. Um, what's the easiest way to get started? Like, what's the easiest way to work it into your routine? Like, so it doesn't feel overwhelming. Like, what tips do you give your clients, I guess? I mean, taking it one day at a time. Don't look at the long haul. Yeah. Right? And wait today. If you have a goal of mine of weight loss, you say, okay, today I'm going to... The Apple Watch has been so revolutionary as far as weight loss because now you can monitor people's steps. Hmm. Now you can say, I'm going to burn my calories. So yeah. I say just go in with a mindset that it takes one day at a time. Yeah. And just go into, okay, all right, today I'm going to work my lower body and I'm going to do three to five exercises. Okay. Um, next day I'm going to do, you know, three to five exercises upper body. Yeah. And want to make it more to so uh, more repetition versus hypertrophy training, how we call it, like things that 10 to 12 reps, you progressively upload, uh, I mean, load the weight. Yeah. So that's more high frequency training. As you get to your endurance, after you get your endurance, now you can go more of a adding more weight and things like that. Or right. just doing compound movements as well. Yep. Like compound movements is when you're doing one movement that takes two muscle groups, so like squat, press, mm. uh, and things like that. Mm -hmm. Cool. Awesome. Good. Oh, do we have one more? Oh, yeah. Yes, we do. How much cardio should we do if our main goal is to gain muscle slash get ripped, but still want to have endurance cardiovascular health? Good question. Um, when it comes to the cardiovascular health, you want to do at least 30 minutes, about okay. four times a week. And make sure you keep your intake of protein up so that you don't compromise to your muscles. If you're trying to build lean muscle. Hmm. So, Isn't that um, like for everyone too, even if you're not trying to build lean muscle, it's still good to monitor protein, right? Yes. It's still yeah. good to monitor protein. Um, protein helps with recovery. They have amino acids in it. So people mostly say protein, oh, I'm going to get bulky. So it helps with recovery, helps with bone okay. density, and it helps uh, just to be relatively, uh, they're like building blocks to build muscle. Okay. So uh, they don't yield no energy. Carbohydrates and fat yield energy. So if you need energy before the workout, you want to have a you know a balanced diet of a protein, mm. carbohydrate, energy. Got it. 
Got it. What are your protein like? Go, how do you get your protein? I mean, I know you have like a whole specific probably diet, but just for the average person, like what's the best, like the easiest kind of like recipes, if you will. If, all right. So I had before Nella, I can only get down three whole meals of protein. Like, it was hard for me to digest it. Mm. So um, now I'm back to uh, three to five meal, a whole meal. And because um, my digestive system has been better. So my go-to for protein, my lean protein is chicken bread, uh, lean white fish, salmon, and uh, I do eat steak. Okay. <laughs> and it's all Other good. People, um, <laughs> on a plant-based side, you can do edamame. Edamame is a great source of protein. Oh, okay. Uh, protein supplement. Okay. So I would want a plant-based also uh, protein supplement because my gut gets it just mm. So I would recommend that. Just do twice the amount because when it comes to uh, plant-based, the amount doesn't get to the muscle as relatively a weight protein. Got it. And I do, for me, to increase muscle, I do 1.2 grams of protein per body weight. I say for women, 0. 0.4, 0. 0.3 is good. Okay. And the electric side of your super athlete, but I think on a daily basis, we want to want to do uh, 0.3 to 0.5 grams per body. Cool. Noted. All right. I think that's all we got. Anthony, this was amazing. Thank you. I can't wait to also. I, I, you know, I'm so all day about this. I know. I love it. I don't want to end. Like, I have all these questions, and we'll have to do a part two for sure. Ella, it changed my bodybuilding career because I was thinking, like, man, this was um, something I was going to suffer from. Yeah. And it only happened to me when I was on prep because I did increase my protein intake. Yeah. Um, I'm on a lot of caffeine, so it's hard to sleep. And, mm. uh, I'm ripping and running, so my digestive system, my bowel movements don't get that time to rest. And then Nella put it out of pocket. I know mean, after one my wake up or if I get my first source of fiber in, yeah. it's right routine. So and that's what I love about the product. Love it. Love to definitely, hear. It definitely resurrect my uh, career for bodybuilding. Cool. Yeah, we'll have to do a part two and deep dive into that next time. But for everyone who's joined, we'll, um, you'll get access to a special code, WWAnthony30, to get 30% off Nella so you can experience some of the benefits he's experienced as well. Where can people learn more about you and get in touch with you for training sessions? Okay, um, you can go to Instagram, Pro underscore Anthony Joke. Um, my email and direct messages on there is contact. And, um, I'm based in the upper west side of my house, but anywhere in the cross state, I'll make it to you if I can. Awesome. And do you do Zoom sessions or just in person? I do in person Zoom sessions and form group training of five max. Perfect. Cool. We'll make, sh we'll make sure we like link that in the caption too and everything, but awesome. Thanks again and talk to you later. Thanks. All right. All right. Bye.